Hello beautiful and wonderful souls that have come and watch my crazy road rants. I don't even know what I look like right now. It's insane. Like I'm looking at it and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in and watching me um, just kind of rant and rumble. I'm going to put you down. Hopefully you can see me, hear me and it is dark, I know but this is like the best as I can do and I was gonna do this video in the morning but I feel like I've gone through something right now and I feel like I should do it right now <sighs> okay so today was really good this is day number five on my trip from Melbourne um, to Canberra to Sydney um, so I stayed last night and left this morning um, Canberra, I absolutely loved it. Had like the coolest accommodation. I feel it was definitely worth the money I paid. It was, I feel like heap, heaps of money. Like it was hundred and fifteen dollars per night, but uh, which for me I think is a lot of money for one night for one room. But it was absolutely like the coolest thing. Like it was. So so amazingly warm um, there was a washing machine there was like just everything like there's a kitchen fully stuffed with everything it was like full-on service department and to make things even better um, I asked him if he had any spare like little charges or whatever because it took me a long time a long, it was a long day for me to cycle into Canberra and most of my stuff like I've used all of my lights like they all were basically very very low and pop battery like two of them were completely dead so I knew that I had to charge them and that's four of them and then I also had you know like your phone your this your that like all these other things to charge and I only had like two little charger things and I just have a bunch of cords right like the USB cords so you just change them around while your things are charging and on the trip before when I went to Port Douglas I had three which I think is much better because then you can charge a little bit more stuff but anyway I only had to and I asked him and he gave me like three spares and even like cord um, for an Apple phone but anyway and like I could charge things I was just like so happy and so relaxed about like all these things and I was just like thank you so much basically and to make things even better this morning when I was going in to check out and to give them back the charges he's like well do you want to take one or two of these he's like I just have like a thousand thousands of them in the box because everyone keeps on leaving them behind so not only that but like I could actually take a couple with me and now I have more charges with me to help me to charge all of my devices which it's probably like more of a first world kind of problem, right? But <laughs> not having enough device, um, chargers to charge up all of your devices at once. But it is definitely like really, you know, helpful. Especially in trips where you have limited amount of time at a certain place and you know you're like going to fall asleep once you hit this place and you get ready for bed. Um, so like definitely don't underestimate that. But anyway, anyway. Uh, I was cycling in and I was settling along and like seriously I also feel like Strava is giving me way less credit for the amount of elevation I'm doing like honestly I wish I had my Garmin running I need to buy a mount to my Garmin and track that because I feel like these days that I've been cycling it's been over 2000 m every day like like I feel like a, um, I know how my body feels when I do those bigger elevations and like seriously when I'm at home Maybe because it is a compilation of, you know, kind of work and effort and not enough time to recover of the last like three weeks of time for the body. But at the same time, I feel like when I do consistent elevation upon elevation upon elevation at home and like when, you know, I'd be doing like 10 mountain Kutha climbs or whatever at night, which would take me like three hours. Um, or whatever like two and a half and it would like give me over 1500 meters elevation per day and I could do just days consequently consequently and I would not be in like that much not pain but like you know soreness and definitely feeling it like in the legs or like in the morning 
feeling it that you've been doing hair of love yesterday. But I guess it's just, yeah, getting used to it and whatever. I'm, I'm just like a little bit surprised that the elevation numbers are not high. Um, but anyway, like again, that's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't in reality, like all these things. When they're measuring your calories, when they're measuring your distance, your elevation, your whatever else, like it doesn't really matter. It's awesome and it's epic to keep the track of these things and kind of have it there for reference, for example, or, you know, a year ago, this kind of ride for that long, this elevation took me blah, blah time. And this year it's taken me this long and you can like actually see your, your improvement but in the greater scheme of things like seriously you're just getting fitter and should just be grateful and thankful for that and this is not even the main focus of this video i feel like i'm i just want to rant <laughs> um okay but i promise i won't make this video long but anyway um what has happened just before is i was toddling along and riding um through the whole day and i felt like it has been a mesh of a day a bit is like only 170 k's but it it has been a bit of a mesh really um and like as i said i feel like the elevation was higher than strava said anyway um i had a few different options because i was trying to get warm showers but i didn't get a reply and then i was trying to figure out where i should stop for the night tonight because i thought it was not a good idea like i ended up leaving canberra after eight and then I thought it's not a good idea to start like a 300k ride, especially with the last, you know, 100 or whatever k being in the hills going into Sydney, which means again, there wouldn't be much light or whatever. So I decided to half it into two days. It was going to be like, yeah, just like 300k's um, from Canberra to, and you can easily do it in one day, absolutely, but obviously recommended to have an early start and have really good lights especially because it's winter and the time gets really dark and blah blah earlier um but anyway so i decided to do it in two days and i was trying to work out where to stop and i chose on this place as i was about 100 k's into my ride today i basically was doing a quick search um on what was available in the area i looked at prices i looked at how far these places are and it showed that it was like 70 k's to this place i was like yeah okay cool done let's go and i called in and i made a reservation because i called in to ask like how much the rooms if the rooms are available and whatever and there was one but she's like the chicken stops at 5 p.m and i was like oh i'm definitely not arriving until f before five so we talked about the options and stuff like that and um the thing that um oh and in order to get here there's like a few different ways to get to this place but whichever way you go you'd either be riding you know 35 k's in um just random country road it's bitumen but it was like a country road where there is like no lighting at all so only lights that you'd have really or as far as I'd know, right, um, are your bike lights. Because it was just to turn off the main highway. And there was like a couple of different options. And one was the 21K, but that just meant you kind of go more on the highway and then you turn in again. And all of those roads, they were just like, you know, in the hills, little country roads, just for hours, like for a couple of hours on your own, basically. And whoever might be passing by or not, like... We'll give you some lights but basically it really does depend and again like i think it's just like internally inside of us we are still a little bit afraid of riding in the dark and as humans we're just used to being out and about running around like in the daylight doing stuff but when it gets dark like going back like you know millions or whatever years uh we'd be living in caves and we'd be running around in the daytime, but at nighttime we'd be too afraid to get in by like, and you know, it was like a lion or a bear or whatever. So we'd go back and hide and, and sleep basically in the darkness. So it has, I, I was like, I, ju I just wanted to brave it. Like I thought like, you know, let's just get it done. Like, like you can do it. Let's just get it done. And of course, like obviously I can do it. And like, I, I am really, quite lucky and grateful that I got it done and it was really good 
really and it was a little bit, bit more light uh, than I thought but it was definitely there was a stretch of the road like for 10k where there was just occasional tiny little light like you know miles away here or miles away there with a tiny little you know farmer's house but the majority of the road it was just the road you know two lanes up and down up and down up and down through the hills with just trees all around and um, it's beautiful with the night sky being on but it was a little bit I was nervous I was calming myself down I was listening to an audiobook and I was just like just better faster get it done like you can do it it's fine <sighs> so anyway anyway um, so I guess coming from that um, and then I kept on cycling I was like 22 or whatever 25 k's until this place and there are two small towns um, on the way here so there were like a couple of streets with lights to break that 25k um, stretch of complete darkness and there has been like there were a few cars passing as well so I was grateful for that it just kind of made me feel like I wasn't completely alone in the bush and um, yeah outside trying to get some on my bike and I kept on calling the bartender downstairs um, well really is a girl that was directed to stay in the place to basically let me in she worked at a bar but that was closed and I kept on giving her a call and kind of saying oh I'm here I'm here now so that I guess calmed me down as well and like I initially I called her up and asked her if it was a bitumen road or not like for me to turn to even like kind of weigh up that risk and understand whether it was worth it or not and when I get here um, and she obviously has to leave straight away because you know like literally there's no one else and she's just like it's you know my work day is finished here's your key please go to your room kind of thing and blah blah um, but anyway this is a really really old school like kind of place I think it's like 1800s hotel with you know like have a quick talk, but there's like stuff I don't know if you can see but there's just like all this stuff on the yeah it's just like old school and it's pretty it's nice and I'm sure in the daylight like tomorrow it's gonna be very interesting there's like this huge staircase thing there's all these like little I forgot what they're called in English but there's like you know there's little sculpture like things on the ceiling and these huge walls and stuff and I cycling through the colder regions of the country I've gotten very very accustomed to heating wherever I go and I'm just like such a warm sunshine sunflower baby that I absolutely love being in the warmth I thrive in the in the warmth which is why I guess I live in Australia and Queensland and I absolutely smashed that ride to Port Douglas really because it was warm because I felt like I was in my element and that was exactly like epic even though this ride is going pretty well anyway I'm just complaining um, just tiny bit or well. anyway um, when I got here the radiators they have these like old school heater things right when you like turn the knob and it's supposed to work it's supposed to like just basically the hot water comes in or hot steam and it kind of goes through the whole battery thing and it warms the room in that way but they have not and this is crazy to me because i feel like it is so cold that like why would they not be on yet because these things they work like seasonal like you know I don't know you open tap and maybe they're just not busy enough or something for this season to have it on anyway I got here after you know kind of riding for a couple of hours in the crazy darkness of literally like tiny little country road when you go in the darkness on the highway it could be better because you know you continuously have cars passing by and you don't feel like you're alone but anyway there's different kind of benefits and different pros and cons to each one but it really like annoyed me I was like so it's cold and I kind of went head up and man like this is crazy how much we are used to these little things right because this is really like a first world thing where you have certain expectations for um, whatever and then if they're not met then you get really like you're not sure how to handle it like you get really upset and after fuming really for a few minutes in reality I think it's just like accumulation of feelings that I was like trying to express um, exert and there's like literally no one else here 
right? And I was just like, started talking to my friend. Um, but I kind of realized that in reality, I'm just so very likely to be here. Like, and if something is not exactly what you expect it to be. And the thing is that I have, I'm paying $100 a night for this room. So again, I had expectations that for that kind of money, like the simple things like X, Y, Z, were going to be met. And that was, I suppose, like, I just thought it would be the norm. And... In fact, like the lady actually asked me to pay 150 for this room, and I was like, um, over the phone, I was like, oh no, I saw it on whatever booking.com that it was $99. And anyway, we had this big thing. So I, anyway, I had expectations that for $100 a night for the room in any hotel, I would get hitting in a colder climate. Like, that was just my expectation. And in reality, when that expression was not met, I got disappointed and angry. Not not like proper angry, angry, but I was just really, really annoyed. Um, but to come, but after like kind of taking three deep breaths, understanding that how like I really am, like there is a kettle over there, so I can make warm tea. There is a warm shower where I can warm up, and there's an electric blanket here. So I'm gonna be fine, and I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna be sleeping inside. Yes. Everything in the sound is shut right now, but I have some dried fruit and I can have that for dinner and it's gonna be fine. Like seriously, I'm slipping inside on a nice comfy bed. Um, well, it looks comfy, because uh, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> but like the reality is that I'm gonna be still warm enough. I can sleep in clothes. There's an electric blanket here anyway. Um, just, you know, like there's a warm shower and I can have a cup of tea and really like, what do I really need more than this right now? I should just like stop having such high expectations and be absolutely and totally grateful and stop being like a spoiled little brat. <laughs> like, really, like, just because I'm used to like a really warm, comfy house where I don't have to wear like a few layers of clothes when I'm walking around the house, like, it's gonna be fine. For one night, you can. Just go that tiny little bit outside of your comfort zone, even though it's pretty great. Like if you consider and think about some of the efforts that people in Indy, Indian Pacific wheel race had to do, like some of them slept on the side of the road. Like okay, granted it was warmer when they were doing this, but still, um, sleeping on the side of the road or like they had like shitty weather days. Like really, I should just be grateful for what I have right now and be appreciative of this. Yes, it's probably completely and crazily overpriced, but that was, again, the choice that I made, and I should just make it work and be more flexible. Just like, I know this video is like insanely long, and if you're still here, thank you so much. And I'm just like ranting on and on now. But basically, I was talking to my other friend, and he used to live in Perth, and he's gone on that in the colder climates, everyone, like in the colder weather in winter, everyone would stop cycling there when he just put on like three layers of clothing and kept on going. And he's like, it is just like that sometimes. Sometimes some people are not willing to push that far to kind of really alter what they used to and alter what they're comfortable with and go outside of their comfort zone. So they don't want to be flexible, they just want to stop and figure out another way in terms of getting to work by public transport, for example, or by driving a car. When others sometimes would choose to actually be flexible and still make the situation work for them. And I hope, I don't know, I'm very cautious of the time that has been like a very long video, but I be like, I really want to express these things. That sometimes we just need to be a little bit more flexible. Sometimes we need to be aware of the risks. And if we take, make these choices and make the, take this ra these risks, there might be consequences in one way or another that we might, like, we might assess, like, big risks, but, you know, might not, or something else might come up. So, in reality, we just really need to a bit more flexible really and sometimes allowing things fall into place wherever they are and it might not be exactly meeting our expectations but one way or another we can still make it work it can still work and be good and be exactly what it needs to be 
and it'll be good enough to make it work for however long it takes. Anyway, I'm so sorry for such a long video. I hope you got something out of it, out of this like crazy rant and expression of just my thoughts and how I've been feeling about this day. Anyway, I'm still absolutely loving it. It's still an adventure and absolutely, like, absolutely definitely 100% like learning experience all the way. So thanks for watching again this video. Thanks for being here with me and I'll see you again tomorrow for more road learnings and um hopefully amazing mexican food in sydney <laughs> all right um lots of love to you guys thanks for watching bye